Tony and Nancy, it's great to have you here on the show, and we're going to be talking about your book, Post Grid, and I'm really looking forward to chatting about this. It's very interesting. I'm kind of a, I, I kind of like reading post-apocalyptic adventures and uh, science fiction and things like that. Um, my own novels are, are based in, uh, you know, a science fiction fantasy background as well. So uh, this, that's my that's my wheelhouse, and I'm really excited to chat with both of you about this particular book. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So let's start off, and uh, maybe Nancy, you can go first. Um, tell us a little bit about your background. I know you're a nurse, but you've done some um, EMS work as well, and, and you can tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, Tony and I met driving ambulance. We were uh, partners as EMTs. Tony was finishing his degree in law enforcement, and I had started nursing school. And uh, we continued to do uh, volunteer fire department, and then we moved back to Arizona, um, and um, but we went into medical rescue with the sheriff's department and did medical rescue, search and rescue. And then when our girls, 13 years later, got old enough to do search and rescue, we went over to Civil Air Patrol. And uh, Tony was cadet commander. And that means that we were in charge, well, he was in charge, and then being the wife and the first lieutenant, um, I was right alongside. And we taught uh, the kids navigation, survival, medical, um, you know, all that type of thing. So, so and Nancy left out that she actually was an EMT at age 16 in North Carolina. Excellent. She started she started in the volunteer rescue squad as well as the volunteer fire department. So she's got she she started in the field. When when uh, back then you could uh, join the rural rescue squad at 15, but you couldn't run calls till you had your EMT and were 16. That's the same way it is here in Maryland, actually. And, um, you know, I'm a member of my local volunteer company as a paramedic and um, started out there as an EMT and, and actually as an aide running calls just as a, a third on the ambulance to help, uh, you know, do whatever needed to be done while the providers took care of care. Um, so I, I, I've worked my way up through the ranks, too. I know how it works. Um, Nancy, you also have some ER background as a nurse as well. Oh, yeah, I did ER uh, most of my career, which is still, but I'm still in nursing, but I'm just doing endoscopy. Uh, probably going to be starting an ACLS PALS instructor here in the next couple of weeks. Fantastic. But, um, yeah, no, I've done ER and uh, obstetrics and critical care transport. Um, Imaging. Yep, 30 years. OB. Wow. <laughs> and, Tony, you have, a, so, you, you have a law enforcement background, but you've also been a flight medic. You were an EMT, as you said. Um, you guys have just a varied background. I really love how many different things involved with uh, first response you guys have been involved with, search and rescue, law enforcement. Um, nursing in the ER, ambulance um, providers, all the, all, the, all the areas, really. Yeah, short attention spans. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I started um, uh, both in law enforcement and, and as an EMT kind of simultaneously at the same time. So when I was in uh, college, I went ahead and took an EMT class, assuming that I was going into law enforcement. And I'd always been fascinated with that sort of thing. Um, so I, I, after college, I became a deputy United States Marshal, and I did that for about five years. And along with that, um, I was the one that had the EMT bag. So I was, I was a, you know, what would now be the, the SWAT medic, mm -hmm. but you know, that was before we said things like that. Yep. <laughs> um, and then uh, through, through time, um, I went ahead and became uh, an intermediate EMT at, at various points um, and uh, a, a paramedic. Um, originally... When I was a paramedic, we were living in Washington at the time, and I worked on the uh, on the ambulance there. And it was a great place to to do that. It was a very small county. There were just twenty paramedics in the county, and so we had very close supervision, which meant that we got a lot of uh, ability to do things. We had pretty much a carte blanche, so that was really nice, uh, a good place to learn. So, in addition to in town, we had a lot of uh, uh, rural and even wilderness type response. Um, I think the longest call I went on was a two and a half hour call to get up to the top of uh, Mount Hood. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> well, excuse me, not Mount Hood. Was it? Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens. Oh, wow. so there we go. And um, so it it was it was a good place to learn. And and uh, there's no no better way to be a paramedic than to be thrown in the back and say, by the way, you're the only paramedic showing up on this call. You better know how to get through it. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a gut check there. Yeah, yeah. So that that was that was good. And then from there. Um, I, I have worked as a flight paramedic, did that for about five years here in, in the Phoenix area. A lot of fun. Um, again, back to the wilderness stuff, Nancy mentioned that we would, uh, were members of the uh, medical rescue posse for the sheriff's office. And what the, the posse does is that is 
involved in providing medical and rescue services into wilderness and backcountry area, in addition to taking care of the lakes and the rivers. So in the summer, we were just inundated with wrecks, fights, drownings, boat wrecks, um, you know, quad accidents, climbing accidents. So again, a lot of a lot of good opportunity to do some backcountry, all on your own type of experiences here. And and our our new EMTs in the Phoenix area don't have a lot of chance to volunteer. So to bring in a brand new EMT and say, oh by the way, <clears throat> there's only two guys working and you're one of them, and the other guy's going to be on the south end. It's 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 a good way to to really develop those skills that otherwise you just you just don't get to use in a in a urban setting. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting. It's funny. I talk to a lot of urban medics who are like, oh, you guys out in the sticks, you don't, you don't have any chance to practice your skills as much as we do. We get, we get stabbings and gunshot wounds and this and that. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know, try to have, you, you guys get to dump your patients off at the hospital 10 minutes after you pick them up. What, how'd mm-hmm. you like to have a patient for a half hour, an hour, two hours, three hours, and you're the only person that is responsible for their care? And yeah, uh, how, how would you like to stay overnight? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and that's yeah. interesting because you guys, um, you know, have that experience of the wilderness EMS um, and the, the austere environment care that where you really have to think outside the box. You have to really think more like almost a nurse, really, with, with that long-term care approach. You know, the EMS, we, we're taught to worry about the first hour or so of the patient's care, maybe longer if we're in a rural setting. Whereas, you know, when I went to nursing school, it, it, I realized that this care window extended throughout the patient's life. And certainly in the long term for days. Um, so it's interesting how you guys have really adapted that to this book. Yes. So we had lots of fun with this because you know nobody really wants to sit down and read uh, 14 hours of uh, you know your your medical calls. Right. So we kind of got to do it in a fun way. Um, you know where we put in obstetrics, we put in uh, gunshot wounds, and um, you know Tony being in law enforcement, he got to put in gunfights. It was fun. Yeah, and, and that, that's what I really like about it is that, um, and I, I really look forward to reading books by healthcare professionals because we, we provide a more realistic view of what happens in medical care. Um, you know, when I teach, when I teach ACLS or, or, or teach a CPR class or something like that, I, I constantly tease people and say, you know, what, ask them this question, what's the only rhythm you can shock only on television? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably know the answer to that question. Right, right. Asystole. Asystole. It's a systole, right? You know, and and so I always jump in with that because I know it grinds on everybody else's nerves as much as it does mine. So it's great to read a book by people who know what they're talking about. But what what spurred you to actually jump in and say, let's write a novel together? You know, um, I think we have two, our egos are too big. You read a book and you go, you know, I can do that. <laughs> no problem, I can do that. Well. You know, after a lot of time trying to teach yourself how to do it, you can do that. You know? <laughs> People ask us how long it took to write the book, and we always joke one year to write, or one year to learn how to write, and one year to write it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's amazing how long it takes. I mean, it's not just, I mean, yeah, you can maybe get that first draft banged out relatively quickly, and by quickly, I mean in maybe a month and a half or so, maybe quicker. And, and but then, it's the rewrites and the fixing the story arc and all of those things that go into really writing a really good book. And I think you guys have accomplished that. Well, well thank you. Thanks. But, you know, and, and here's the other thing. With, as you know, as a writer yourself, you always hope to improve over what you did last time. Mm-hmm. And so there's this constant trying to learn. And then, oh, you know, I learned that, but I didn't implement it. I need to go back and I need to, to, to do that. So there's just a constant... Um, struggle and, and, and attempt to improve what, what your, you know, your craft and your ability to, to, to write something that people really enjoy reading. So you've got a book. Um, you're, I think uh, Kelly's the main character, uh, the, the nurse that, that yep. tries to get out to the, get out when the uh, um, electromagnetic pulse strikes. Um, and along the way, she picks up a, a sheriff's deputy in need uh, along the way that, that is wounded and needs assistance. And together, the two of them kind of gather this group together to, to, to survive following this apocalyptic event. Right. And, um, you know, so we kind of start in town and then go through the uh, initial recognition that uh, the electric's out and probably is not coming back. And then, uh, then we have to make our way to somewhere there where there aren't four million other people, mm-hmm. which is the city of Phoenix. 
One of the things, you know, we, we talk about uh, the starting with a, an electrical goal, magnetic pulse. And, you know, for those that don't know, what, what this is about is you lose um, your electrical power grid and a lot of your devices from a nuclear weapon that's exploded high in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. What that does is it sends out a pulse of... of uh, Highly of, charged of energy. Electric, yeah, of, of ions. And that takes out the power grid and, and other things. When we wrote our book, we wrote it so that all electrical stuff stopped. Now, that's probably not realistic, but you know what? It makes, it makes my decisions as a writer a lot easier instead of trying to decide what thing can miraculously work when I need it to and what thing can't work when, I, when, when, uh, right. when it's best for the story. No, I, think, I think that makes perfect sense. You have to take some artistic license. I mean, in my books, I mean, they're set in a parano paranormal urban world, um, much like our own, except that the creatures of myth and legend live alongside us. So, it, And these are paramedics whose sole job is to provide care to werewolves, vampires, mummies, fairies, elves, you name it. <laughs> you bet. And, and, and so I had a lot of fun doing the same thing, which was, look, you're going to suspend your disbelief. You're not going to ask me a lot of questions. Everything's going to be as medically sound as I can make it, but there's a story and there's other things going on and I want you to enjoy it along the way. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, the, the fun part with us um, is since our book is, is in a local environment, we did a lot of playing with, with places and place names and whatnot. So the book starts in a hospital where Nancy and I both worked out of. Um, the, the, it, it no longer exists. Right. <laughs> You know, and and then and we go to places. Um, you know, I I'm a deputy constable here in the county. I still work hand in hand with the sheriff's office and whatnot, and, and I know those folks. And one of uh, my deputy friends was reading the draft of the book, and they talk about going into a, a small town called Fountain Hills. And he says, "I knew exactly where I was. I knew that store. You know, I, I know those places." And for for the local folks, that's a lot of fun because they get to see that up front. And then we do, we, we do a lot of playing with, with names. Um, if you're a local person, you'll recognize family names mm -hmm. you know, in the appropriate place. You'll, you'll recognize the puns on, on names and that sort of stuff. And it's, it's really less for the reader. And but we did a lot of medical names, too. A lot of our characters are named after the medical conditions that they have. Oh, that's great. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you know, you, you'll see that our diabetics are named after, you know, the, the founder of insulin right. and uh, the people with CHF are named after the uh, person that made the first, um, uh, you know, mechanical heart. And uh, so it's kind of fun that way, too, to figure out why we named characters the way we did. So what's next? I mean, you've got this book. It's been out for, what, about a year, a little over a year, I guess. And um, yep, sequel's coming up. Excellent. When, when do, you, do you have a date planned? Do you think oh, you know we don't have done? a date. You know, um, we're not professional writers mm -hmm. in that we don't do it full time. So uh, both having jobs and um, and children and grandchildren, um, it's 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 hard to get in enough time to, to write as much as we'd like. Well, we'll look forward to that. Do you have a do you have a working title for the next book? Um, no. Okay. Uh, Post grid two. Post grid two. <laughs> so. I, I urge everybody to check it out. It's a great book. Um, I'm about halfway through and enjoying myself reading it. Um, and uh, thank you very much for the, the complimentary copy of the book. I really enjoy it. Um, and, and so I'm going to make sure I link to it in the book. But is there any place in particular you'd like people to go to find out more information about the book or where they can purchase it? Um, on Amazon.com. It comes in Kindle Unlimited, Kindle, and uh, paperback. Excellent. And so uh, all of our marketing goes right to Amazon. Um, the other thing is, is we have information on our um, Facebook page, uh, Facebook Post Grid. So we put up interesting articles. We have an interesting article right now on the efficacy of uh, ACLS drugs. Um, really interesting. Shows uh, very little difference between uh, administering drugs and not administering drugs. <laughs> Believe me, I follow that stuff very closely. And, and, <laughs> and uh, you know, so, it, you're yeah, right. so Amazon and Facebook. Yeah, I think our problem with the ACLS stuff is that we're old enough in the in the system to know that. We've been through this cycle before. Yeah, yeah. You guys, you guys remember bicarb, you know, just routinely you being. Oh yeah. Right. I mean, let's push it. And and now we would never think about it. And and you you tell people that you know we used to push bicarb like it was candy, and they'd be yeah. like, well, why would you do that? And, well, we didn't. You know, why do we do some of the things we still do? Uh, that's right. That's a question to ask. So that's great. Um, is so we'll look for the the site on Facebook, and I'll have links to that, and we'll also have links to the book in on Amazon. I urge people to check it out. It's a great read, and we'll stand by for Post Grid Two. Do me a favor, guys. When you when you have Post Grid Two out, please. Read Reach out to me. I'd love to have you back on the show. 
Okay, you bet. You bet.